Okay, let's talk about basic trigonometry. And the problem here is cosine of theta, some sort of angle, or some angle theta. So the cosine of this angle is equal to one half. And the question is, how many degrees is this angle theta? So there's two ways you can answer this question. You can use a calculator, or you can do this without a calculator. I'm gonna suggest that you do this both ways because it's important that you know how to use your calculator in order to answer a question like this, but it's also very critical that you know how to answer this question without your calculator. So if you wanna go ahead and uh, solve this basic trigonometry problem, I'm gonna put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually gonna show you the correct result here in just one second, and I'm gonna explain how to do this problem with a calculator and without a calculator. And uh, just so you uh, know, you know, we are talking about trigonometry, and a lot of you, are, you know, you might be asking, "Hey, when do I take trigonometry in school?" Well, typically, just as you, just so you know, uh, most basic trigonometry you start learning in high school level geometry. Now, this is typical. It all depends on what you know uh, course you're at, or if you're taking a college level course. But this is, uh, uh, for the most part, how most students kind of are introduced to trigonometry, and then later on, for the most part. In high school, you study trigonometry as part of a course like, say, pre-calculus or advanced algebra. It used to be way back in the good old days, they used to have like a full semester trigonometry course. But uh, irrespective of when you're learning basic trigonometry, um, you need to know how to answer a question like this. So we're going to get into all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It is my true passion to help people learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time in math. Maybe you hate math. Maybe you're like, I just wish I wouldn't have to take this math class. Listen, I totally get it. You don't have to love math. But if you have to take a math course, you want to do as uh, well as you can, right? You don't want to just pass with a C minus or, you know, some of you are just hoping just to pass. But what I've found is that most students who don't like math don't like it because they're frustrated with math, okay? So here's the three things you need to be successful in mathematics. One, you got to be willing to work hard. There is no shortcuts. So if you're not going to put in the work, okay, you're not going to be uh, uh, really able to master uh, all the information that you need to know. There's just too much stuff to learn in math. So you got to be willing to work hard. The second thing you need is encouragement. And this is really important for those of you that have had a tough time in math. You kind of want to know, hey, if I'm if I put in the work, am I going to actually, you know, be successful? And I'm telling you, yes. So you know, don't give up. There is absolute hope. But what you need is this third part. Okay, you need to learn from someone or something that you actually understand. Nothing's more frustrating than being in the classroom. And listen to someone that, you know, might be a great teacher, but you're not understanding what they're saying. So now you're just looking around and you're confused about what's going on. That's how problems start, okay? The way I like to teach math, because math is a technical subject, I like to explain things in easy ways so all students get what's going on. And I don't water down the material. So there's a way to do that, but it comes from years and years of teaching, all right? So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something that has math on it, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. A lot of you don't even take any notes. But if you want to start immediately improving in math, start taking better notes. Really, really important that you do. But in the meantime, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so cosine of theta is equal to 1 half. What is this angle? How many degrees is this angle theta? Let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. Theta is equal to 60 degrees. So angle theta is equal to 60 degrees. So this was our problem. So how did you do? Now, hopefully you did this problem both ways, right? You just didn't plug this into your calculator. If you used your calculator only, I'm going to suggest to you that you still 
need to kind of verify the, uh, you know, your complete understanding of this topic, all right? But if you didn't use your calculator and just did this by hand, that's great as well. But you also want to make sure that you understand what buttons to push on your calculator in order to get this answer right. But if you totally did this uh, correct using uh, both techniques, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A++, a 100% and a few stars to celebrate your understanding of basic trigonometry. Nice job. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And the first thing we're going to do is just kind of review some real, real basic trigonometry fundamentals. And when you start learning trigonometry, you start learning about something called trigonometric ratios. That's these little things right here, sine, cosine, and tangent. If you look on your calculator, if you happen to have a scientific calculator, you'll see these buttons there. This S-I-N, uh, C-O-S-T-A-N, this is sine, this is cosine, this is tangent. There's other trigonometric functions, or, uh, but we uh, t um, refer to these as trigonometric ratios, okay? Now, what is a ratio? Well, a ratio is effectively a fraction. You'll see uh, why that's the case here in just one second. But what we're talking about really here is something called right angle trigonometry. So in order to really understand right angle trigonometry, you, you need to master this phrase that's probably been around for maybe like 100 years. Probably some of your grandparents or great, great, great grandparents know new way phrase like this. But here is the phrase you want to know. So, ka, toa. So, ka, so, ka, toa. See, I almost I mispronounced it. So, ka, toa. So anytime you're thinking about basic trigonometry, just remember this phrase and you'll um, kind of... Uh, help yourself stay on track about the definition of what these uh, trigonometric functions are. Okay, so the so, we're talking about sine, the ka, we're talking about cosine, and the to here, we're talking about tangent. All right, so here's the way this uh, so ka to works. Basically, you just want to construct a nice, lovely little right triangle. Okay, when you learn this, so here is a triangle, and this is a right triangle triangle. We're not talking about any run-of-the-mill triangle like this. We're specifically talking about a right triangle, 90 degree angle right here in one of the corners. So let's uh, suppose we have some angle right here, theta, right in this corner here. What we want to do is kind of label the respective sides of this right triangle. Okay, so the longest side of any right triangle is called the hypotenuse. Okay, well, put an H there to represent the hypotenuse, and it's always going to be opposite the uh, right angle, because okay, so the opposite side of that right angle is the hypotenuse. But just visually, you just look at this triangle, and we're like, hey, which one is the longest side? It's this one here. That's going to be our H, or the hypotenuse. Now, here is our angle right here, okay? Let's take a look at the side of the triangle that helps form this angle that's right next to the angle. We call that the adjacent side. So that we're going to label this A. This is the adjacent side of this specific angle right here. Okay, of course I can have an angle here, an angle here. Doesn't make a difference, but as the, where the angle is located in this triangle, the side that's connecting to the angle, okay, or adjacent to it, we're going to label as A. Okay, all right. So that leaves us with one more side, and the side that's opposite, okay, of the angle is O. All right, so when we look at a right triangle, we want to look at the angle, and then we uh, uh, immediately say, okay, where's well, the longest side? That's going to be H, and then we identify the adjacent and the opposite sides of a right triangle. Okay, so now that we have that down, we can go ahead and define using our SOCA TOA these trigonometric ratios, this trigonometric function. So here's some angle, okay? The sine of this angle, we're thinking SO, okay? And the O and the H is opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, this is what this is. So the sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. Sine of this angle, O over H. The cosine of this angle here is ka, okay, or adjacent over hypotenuse. So in other words, if we had the actual lengths of this triangle, we just simply plug in the respective lengths and get the number, and we would uh, calculate the cosine, for example, of this particular angle, and then the tangent is uh, opposite over adjacent O over A. 
All right, so this is fundamental stuff. Hopefully, you're familiar with this. If you are like, well, I'm not, still not quite sure, let me give you a couple suggestions. If you're interested in learning basic trigonometry with me, I'm going to suggest that you check out my geometry course. In my geometry course, I have a, um, a section on basic right angle trigonometry. Okay, so that's kind of a good like mini starter course in terms of uh, you wanting to learn trigonometry. But if you really want to learn advanced and full, complete trigonometry, then you want to go ahead and check out my pre-calculus course. I have a several, well, not several, like four chapters, I believe, on uh, trigonometry, advanced level trigonometry, to include the basic stuff as well. Okay, so a couple of uh, suggestions just in case you need to, like, you know, do some additional review. But now that we understand the definitions of these trigonometric functions, okay, we can actually do this problem now. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we're told that the cosine of some angle is equal to one half. So remember, the cosine is ka, so ka toa. So we're thinking the cosine of this angle, uh, by definition, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's go back to our right triangle, and here is our angle. Okay, you can see our angle right here. So the adjacent would be 1, okay, because this right here is 1. Okay, remember 1 half, or it's being told the cosine of this angle is 1 half. This is the adjacent, and 2, therefore, has to be the hypotenuse. So there is 2. So what we're, uh, what we're looking at is a right triangle where this side is 1 and this side is 2. Okay, so what triangle, what right triangle has the, uh, these ratios in terms of their size, have the, has these lengths? Well, that's going to bring us to the, this right here. This is very, very critical. So when you're learning basic trigonometry, you need to be super familiar with these triangles here. 30, 60, 90 degrees and 45, 45, 90 degrees. Okay, these are the two um, special right triangles that you need to know a lot about. So a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle has um, uh, basically these ratios. The smallest side right down here, we could say is one, okay? Or in this particular, our example here is one. The hypotenuse is always double the smallest side. Okay, so if this is one, the hypotenuse is two, and then the medium side or the middle side here is going to be this number, one times the square root of three. Okay, so for example, let's suppose this small side here was five. Okay, let's suppose the small side of this 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle was five, so our hypotenuse would be double that. So that would be 10, and then this side here would be five times the square root of three. Okay, so that's another example. Uh, you need to know how to, uh, you know, find the lengths of, of the uh, 30, 60, 90 right triangle. But more importantly than that, you need to know, need to recognize when you're dealing with one. You're like, okay, look, this side down here is one. The hypotenuse is double that. So therefore, this angle must be 60. Okay. So again, uh, when you draw out these triangles, don't confuse where the 30 degrees at and where the 60 degrees at. If this is one and this is two, right, try to draw this out like so. Don't draw your, try to draw your, your triangle to scale because you can see here that this angle looks bigger than this angle. So this is where the 60 goes and this is where the 30 goes. Of course, this is 90, okay? All right, so uh, just based upon this, you're like, oh, this is one, that's two. So the cosine of one, uh, this angle is one half or one over two, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, therefore, uh, it is equal to 60 degrees. So that's how we answer the question without using a calculator. Now, if you want to use a calculator, you need to know how to do that as well. And what you need to do is use the second function uh, for your cosine button, okay? So uh, on your calculator, if you have a uh, scientific calculator or a um, graphing calculator, if you go in and you hit that second function, you'll see something on your calculator that looks like this, cosine negative one. This is what we call arc cosine, okay? What's pretty cool about that is if you plug in, if, we, if we're saying that the cosine of some angle is one half, if I plug in this number, okay, into the arc cosine, it will tell me the angle that has, it will tell me the angle that has a cosine of one half. So that's a whole nother discussion, arc functions and everything else. But basically, if you hit that second button and bring up that cosine negative one and plug in one half, 
and hit enter, you'll get 60 degrees. Now, one word of caution here, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. There is another mode that if you're studying trigonometry, you're going to have to use called radian uh, mode. And uh, you're going to have to flip-flop between radian mode and degree mode. It's such a, a classic um, error where students um, will leave their calculator in radian mode and then they'll go want to, uh, you know, have, they'll do something, some sort of calculation, they want their answer in degrees, but their calculator was left in radian mode and they get the wrong answer even though they were pushing the right button. So always check what mode your calculator is in. But if your calculator is in degree mode and you go ahead and do this work, you'll see you'll get 60 degrees as the correct answer. Okay, so basic trigonometry. Trigonometry is such a cool subject. Um, hopefully, you're, um, you know, you're not at the, you know, if you're at the basic level, hopefully you're going to continue on because uh, trigonometry, again, it's such a, you know, there's so many cool problems you can solve with trigonometry. But again, it all starts by understanding the basics. So hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.